What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. Here we go. Here we go. We got passage number two on the Blueprint FL exam. Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric, and I'm on a mission to make sure that this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys because I know what it's like to be pre med. Okay, you have a lot going on. MCAT should be the least of your worries because the MCAT is easy. It's a lot, but it's easy. Okay, so before I break this down, I want you guys to go ahead and do the passage on your own first. All right. Read through this passage first. Pause it whenever you need to, guys. Read through it first and answer the questions on your own first. So write down your answer choice. Okay. See where you went wrong. See where you went right. This is question number six, seven. Pause whenever you need to, guys. Eight, nine. And that's it. Okay, cool. All right. Yep. That's it. All right. So I'm going to show you guys exactly where to highlight. I'm going to show you guys how to pick the best answer. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to not get lost in the details, how to make all this actually, you know, make sense. All right. Be easy for you guys. All right. If you want to get those big scores, those big jumps, you have to make the MCAT easy. Also, before I break it, down, I'm just going to plug this in, guys. If you're interested in working one on one with me inside MCAT University, all right, it's the amazing all in one program that will definitely get you to hit your target score. Go ahead after this video. And go to the comment section, click on the link, fill out the interview. Okay, I'll interview you personally and see if we're a good fit. Then I'll invite you and ask you to join MCAT University. Okay, so I'm going to break it down right now. Sip in the water. Let's do this. Nuclear power plants harness the energy of the uranium-235, U-235, fission, and convert it to electricity. All right, you should know what fission is, guys. Fission and fusion. Fission is when it um, breaks apart. Fusion is when it comes together, okay? Fission is initiated by bombarding U-235 with neutrons, which splits them into smaller atoms that then induce fission of nearby U-235, causing a chain reaction that releases energy. All right, a chain reaction. I'm highlighting things that sticks out to me in the passage. Okay, whatever sticks out to you, you highlight it. It's different for everybody. Okay, everyone has different levels of content review. Mine's pretty high. So I'm always going to highlight things that stick out to me, okay? In 2011, power systems at the Fukushima Daiichi NPP in Japan were disabled by a tsunami, causing the release of radiation and volatile radionuclides, unstable isotopes that undergo decay. Oh no, that's bad. Into the surrounding environment. Oh no, that's bad. Okay, let's see what happens. In Fukushima, there was a concern about the effects of the radiation and radionuclide contamination on human, animal, and plant life. You know, I could imagine that there's concern. Nuclear radiation can damage DNA, induce cancer, and cause cell death. Okay, so... I also like to highlight these things, guys. Even though I already know nuclear radiation, you know, can cause DNA damage, induce cancer, and cause cell death. Even though I already know that, I'm going to highlight it. Because whatever they say in the passage is right. Okay? It doesn't matter what I thought before. It doesn't matter if before I read the passage that I thought nuclear radiation can't cause DNA damage. All right? What I thought before doesn't matter. What they give me right in front of me in the passage is what is true and what I will always believe to be true. Okay? Whatever they tell you in the passage is always, always 100% true. All right. Scientists investigated two examples of DNA damage believed to be caused by the accident. One in Japanese FIR trees and one in humans. Researchers noticed that Japanese FIR trees near the NPP, which is the, the site, I believe. Yeah, no, the nuclear power plants. Okay. So these trees near the nuclear power plants had a higher rate of morphological defects than those in uncontaminated areas, including deletion of the leader shoot and buds produced after the incident. Okay, so what happened to these trees when they were exposed to this radiation? Their buds, their buds were deleted. All right, this led to concern about the release of radionuclide I-131, an isotope with a half-life of eight days. Okay, it's important information. That undergoes beta minus decay, followed by gamma emission. All right, you should know what those are. Because the body concentrates iodine in the thyroid, exposure to its radioactive isotopes can cause thyroid cancer in humans. Thyroid cancer, bam. 
to assess the possibility that I-131 contamination was the cause of leader shoot deletions and thyroid cancer. Okay, they're going to tell us some research here. They're trying to confirm the results. Researchers measured average I-131 contamination levels in five areas, okay, near the NPP, near the plant each of which covered six square miles with similar populations. They measured the average number of leadership deletions in the 2012 buds and the incidence of pediatric thyroid cancer cases in the area between 2012 and 2014. Their data is summarized below in table one. All right, we don't look at the table. We only look at tables and figures when the question asks for it. We don't want to spend time analyzing this. We'll waste our time. Let's go. Which of the following are products of the decay of I-131? All right, simple content review, guys. This is why I always stress for you guys to really get your content down because there's so many questions about content in these passages as well. So what happens? Um, this led to uh, half-life eight days, undergoes beta minus decay, followed by gamma emission. All right, you guys should know what beta, is, beta minus decay is. The way I like to remember it, beta minus decay Minus means Z goes up by one. They're backwards. Okay. Beta plus decay means Z goes down by one. So we have beta minus decay. So the Z will go up by one. Where's iodine? Where is it? Let's see. I iodine is right here. When we increase the proton number by one, when we increase the Z by one, we get XE. Okay. So we get XE. I think that's Xeon. I think that's how you pronounce it. So whatever's not Z, I'm going to eliminate. B and D, I'm eliminating. Um, do I get an electron or a positron? Beta minus decay, we're going to get an electron. Is it ionizing or not ionizing? Well, we also get gamma emission. Okay, Gamma waves are pretty, they have high frequency. If you remember the electromagnetic spectrum, gamma, they're all the way to the right. Okay, They have a very high frequency, so you know damn well that they're going to be ionizing 100%. So, process elimination, we eliminate B, eliminate D. We know it's an electron. We know it's ionizing. Answers A, very, uh, very confident in my answer choices, guys. 100% confidence. How you have to be when you take the MCAT. You have to be confident as fuck. All right. Why did the researchers choose to study pediatric rather than adult thyroid cancer cases? Good question. Pretty good question, all right? It's a good, actually, this is a very representative question here of the MCAT. I like that. Okay. Thyroid cancer is not otherwise present in children. This is wrong. Okay, I'm going to that right away. Axe, boom. What do you mean? There's thyroid cancer, and I'm pretty sure it's thyroid cancer in adults and kids. Okay, whenever you smell some BS, axe it out right away. Thyroid cancer is not otherwise present in adults. Again, these mean very similar here. They're both wrong. I smell BS. Axe it out. Bam. We don't care. Children receive a higher relative dose of I-31 at the same contamination level. Children receive a lower relative dose of I-31 at the same contamination level. All right. If you're good at knowing how research is done, you know that they're going to want to use the higher. They're, they're going to use the kids because they do have a higher dose. Okay. That's going to help with your information, with confirming your results. Okay. Also, if you're not that good at research, okay, children do receive this higher dose because they, they're smaller. Okay, they're more susceptible to, you know, huge radiation than adults are. Okay, they're still growing in all this. All right. So, also, if you kind of kind of think about it, all right, children have higher metabolism. Higher metabolism means more thyroid hormone. And since they have all this thyroid hormone in them, they're more likely to get attacked by these radiation. So, they're more likely to have the dose of I31. So, Seven to C. Very confident. Axe these out. Very confident answer choice. That's how you guys have to be. Let's keep going. Several families in areas four and five who read the results of the study believe that their children have no increased risk of developing thyroid cancer. Is this conclusion accurate? All right. Let's see. Four and five. Okay, let's see what happens here. All right. In one... You do have more cancer. Two, when you have a high contamination, you do have more cancer. Three, when you have moderate, you do have more cancer. Four, you also have more. Mm, you don't really have that many incidents of cancers over the years. 
this one, you also don't have that many more incidents of cancer over the few years here. Let's see what they got. No, the mutations caused by I-131 exposure may take more than three years to manifest as cancer. Yes, I like that answer, okay? Maybe it takes longer, okay? The lower contamination, it could take a longer time to manifest. That's a possibility, all right? Am I excited, really, really confident as answer? I'm, I feel good about it. I feel good about it. Let's keep going. No, I-31 has a half-life. Okay, why do we care about the half-life here? <laughs> All right, we don't care about the half-life. Yes, yeah, stable one showed that there was no increase in cancer in areas 4 and 5 in years 2013 and 2014. Um, mm, I don't know, because there is an increase here. We go from 2210 to 2532, and we go from 2210 to 2288. So technically, this is not really that correct. But, I mean, it is kind of right, but this is a better answer. I don't like this because this data here can prove that that's wrong, but the data here can't prove that this is wrong. Notice what I did there. Okay. Yes, the radiation given off is not mutagenic. We know it's mutagenic. Okay. So A or C. The better answer is A. They're both, they both could be correct. Okay, they both are okay answers, but the better answer is A. You guys have to have that, be able to distinguish that, all right? It is found that small to moderate doses of one I-131 are more likely to cause thyroid cancer than extremely large doses, which the following provides the best explanation for this observation. Okay. Small doses of I-131 are nosworthy by the body, okay? In order to be, in order to give cancer, okay, you need to be absorbed by the body, okay? You have to, so. Also, they're saying small is more likely, so this is wrong. All right, extremely large doses of I-131 are not absorbed by the body. If you have a small dose being absorbed by the body, you're going to have a large dose being absorbed by the body as well. How, how does that make any sense that only large but not small gets absorbed by the body? You know, that doesn't make sense. No matter what, you're going to be absorbed. If a little bit gets absorbed, a lot of it will get absorbed. Okay. The amount of radiation released by large doses of I-131 is enough to damage DNA without killing cells. And the amount of radiation released by small doses is enough to damage these DNA without killing cells. Okay, two answers, pretty similar. You got to use your thinking here. Okay, you got to think out of the box here. Now, if you have these two that are pretty close, you have to do a little bit of reaching. Okay, and I know in the other videos, I'm like, hey, don't reach, don't reach, don't reach. Okay, but when they're very, very similar like this, you got to go ahead and make an assumption, all right, using your scientific background knowledge, all right. If I have radiation that's large enough to damage DNA without killing cells, this is unlikely to happen, okay. How can If you have a large DNA damage, I'm pretty sure that cell is going to die. That cell is not going to continue replicating if you have large DNA damage. But if you have little DNA damage, then that cell can get away with it and continue replicating and cause cancer. Okay, that's how cancer is made. So the answer is going to be D, okay? I'm going to say it again, all right? Large doses to kill, to damage DNA without killing the cell is very unlikely to happen, all right? If your DNA is damaged, you're pretty much going to die as a cell. But small DNA damages, they can get away with it. They can mutate. Replicate, cause cancer. All right, that's it for this one, guys. All right, we're going to go check and see if we got all of them right. Let's see. This was passage two. Um, oh, let's go back. Oh, this is all right. Nine is D. That was correct. That's the explanation if you guys like. Eight was A. That was correct. C, that was correct as well. A, that was correct as well, guys. All right. 
If you guys are interested in working one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead, book an interview, and I'll see you guys in the next video where I break down passes number three. Subscribe. I'll see you guys.